So warm welcome to everyone here as we're um, still coming together. It looks like some people are still joining as we've already uh, you know, began to welcome ourselves and each other to this space. And you can take these first moments to really play with that sense of welcoming internally welcoming ourselves to be here in whatever way we're appearing in this moment you know maybe sleepy maybe tired at the end of a day if you're in the southern hemisphere um maybe uh, with a quiet mind or a more active mind with a restful body or a less restful body you know whatever we're meeting can we welcome that into this moment and then also feel the welcoming externally outwardly to each other and that movement between the two yeah a little bit uh, or a lot um aligned with the explorations we we had yesterday and today um so just that sense of welcoming of greeting and meeting ourselves and our community as it gathers uh, in that way, uh, always very, uh, very moved to come into the space to see the warmth uh, just in these little messages in the chat of the gathering to feel this community gathering from across the planet from across the globe. And um, my name is Zohar and I'm teaching these sessions this week and one of the teachers that regularly offers these daily meditation sessions. And today, as usual, we will have um, a short reflection to start us off on the theme of this week uh, and then a half hour meditation, <clears throat> followed by some time for questions and explorations, which have been incredibly rich uh, thus far. So I'm saying it now, if you can, I know sometimes people need to go move on to other bits of their day, but uh, if you can, I would recommend staying for that or catching up with the recording later. So I want to um, continue unfolding the theme of this this week, which is, you know, this liberating care, this path of kindness, of compassion and well-being, um, which is such a core aspect of the Buddha's teachings. Yeah. Um, and such a, you know, I always feel the Buddha here with us, encouraging us yeah. to cultivate these qualities, to develop them as part of our path, <clears throat> path of transforming suffering <clears throat> for ourselves and others. Apologies for cranky voice. And the Buddha you know, really encouraged this development of, um, goodwill and the capacity to radiate it to send it out um, to uh, others and eventually to all beings um, as a path of freedom as a path that liberates as a path that supports um, our well-being and you know it's really helpful to see this as a cultivation you know something that we are developing cultivating this skill yeah, rather than I need to know how to do this, or I need to be able to do this, um, is that, ah, how can I develop it? How can I nourish it to grow? And, um, you know, this is part of why the questions have been so rich, because we've really been going into that skill of development, and how is this for, for us? Yeah, and also um, takes individual um, shapes, you yeah. And so um, that movement between cultivating that towards our own experience and then the expanding. Now that's kind of came a lot in the questions yesterday. Uh, and like, is it binary or is it actually a fluidity now that's mutually supportive, just like the welcoming at the beginning now. And when I said, welcome yourself, expand to the others and feel that welcoming, the welcoming of others, supporting the sense of welcoming oneself and the welcoming of oneself, supporting um, the sense of welcoming others. 
and you know remembering as i said already this is so cool so f- foundational uh to our path and it's these are cultivations that can take us all the way to uh, a free life um and so seeing our path as a path of matter of goodwill yeah which you know we call it goodwill but we can also see it you know across a range you know all the way to non ill will non enmity yeah so from non ill will non enmity all the way to a deep sense of friendliness and care and similarly with compassion from you know non harming and intention and a commitment and an exploration of non harming and all the way to the alleviation of suffering for all and it's that whole range it's that whole spectrum that we're interested in hopefully we can feel already the possibilities in it because maybe you know compassion feels too much of a stretch you know in the in the expansion you know towards somebody or someone but we can feel that sense that intention of non harming you know towards them you know, do you see that or a sense of friendliness maybe uh like feel too much towards something or somebody you know but we can feel non ill will non enmity towards that whether it's a painful sensation in the body or a challenging relationship in our lives and so we have that range yeah that's one really important aspect of these beautiful uh, immeasurable qualities of heart and mind that we're developing yeah from just the non ill will the non enmity the non harming all the way Uh, and all the way to a deep sense of compassion friendliness goodwill and we also have that capacity to bring that in relationship to different um aspects of our experience you know we've been touching on that so it's spoken of as a process of expansion um sometimes i feel it can be more helpful to see it as a process of direction you know that we're actually directing these attitudes these ways of relating <clears throat> in different directions yeah <clears throat> so right now you know i can bring a sense of compassion yeah, to my throat yeah, and the croakiness and the kind of ah, struggling <laughs> to function today um i can bring it there i can bring it to you having to kind of listen to the less pleasant sounds of a croaky voice yeah so this is its directionality we can ex- we can direct it in different ways and in the practice we we practice that yeah we exercise that we develop the skill through that practice so where do um i turn it where do i direct it it's like again to the body to the immediate experience to other beings everywhere yeah and we can see that as expansion that's one way it works yeah and that's one if that's helpful paradigm use that we can also see it as directionality which direction is it going um and in you know perhaps we can see that in all these ways when we increase where the directions it can go where it expands to um you know there's a real richness of experience that opens up being touched by others touching others in our life you know that you know it's coming up in the questions yesterday you know, a sense of that often the helplessness that comes for us with compassion in the face of real distress and distress and destruction uh, and then the sense of i you know i'm being touched and things happening maybe far away from me and yet i'm touched by that and similarly can i feel that as i'm opening with compassion to that situation yeah you know, that is also moving Yeah, mysteriously in the world um we can also see it as sharing you know sharing the beauty of the practice with others sharing the beauty of our hearts and the care of our hearts with others and so sometimes and i think it's even in the description this week we see this kind of the natural movement of when a heart a heart and mind are well nourished or there's a sense of goodwill meta friendliness um and the heart meets suffering naturally becomes compassion and that's again one way it develops um but another way is you know that we actually touched by the pain 
of our own experience of the world and compassion arises in response and actually the arising of compassion is nourishing <clears throat> and i think you know my intention is to kind of explore that more tomorrow but i just want to touch on that today to see also how compassion nourishes and again that directionality is an intentional way that we can play with that you know, so that we don't get overwhelmed so that we kind of continue to feel um to have a sense of resilience with our uh, heart's engagement with the world it includes our actions but also just our internal um life so when we cultivate intentionally cultivating and developing that capacity to meet the painful to meet the distressful um, in a way which is kind of open and spacious and grounded and potentially yeah, nourishing for us as well because there's not really this separation you know, between myself and others and yet we need to also um, have that relative sense you know, that there's that care of the directionality um, which is caring for everyone so in the in the tradition the language is that we expand the practice from you know oneself to those close to us and then gradually to further and further afield until uh, it includes all beings and a really really useful practice question for us can be when we think about all beings when we kind of contemplate this intention to expand compassion or kindness or joy to all beings um who's being left out yeah or um where is it more um, challenging for me to bring that yeah. and this, this is um again not not something to oh you know what's my weak spot and i need to fix it it's just an interest to see you know, how is this heart and mind working and operating so you know for some of us it may be the body yeah. the body's left out or this or, or ourselves it's more difficult to bring self-compassion that's part of why we've been uh, working with that so far this week um for others it may be challenging relationships um or it may be that sense of expanding just radiating out and i i lose the sense of the individuality and the particularity yeah so um it's just interesting to know this you know when we speak about all beings who is there someone or you know groups or uh, aspects of experience that are habitually left out and really interested in this without being pushy or demanding. Remember when we're practicing expansion, and for some of us, yeah, it's actually might be easiest to radiate out yeah, in all directions, the less personal. Yeah? And it may be that. And if it is, we want to know that because that, that will be our refuge, that will be our, our resting place. It's actually ah, expanding out, it's easier than bringing it in. Or bring it in towards a particular experience or you know maybe bringing it in is okay and expanding out is okay but then working with particular individuals is difficult you know? so we want to um just to know what's our what's our learning territory um so for some this may be quite easy the expansion all the way out uh, others may need to do it more gradually uh, there's no hierarchy there's no better or worse we just want to know what's helpful the key is appropriateness what's appropriate what pace what directionality and this is why i brought in the directionality rather than the just the view of the expansion uh, and going in the directionality and pace that is supportive and helpful for me um, with how my experience is right now maybe different tomorrow we don't know maybe a kind of a regular pattern that i need to be aware of and, and sensitive to so yeah i was aware the reflection was going to be slightly long this morning i apologize for that and we're just going to end it with a quote yeah from the suttas uh the buddha speaking and they say this about all the different brahma viharas the goodwill the metta the compassion the unselfish joy and equanimity and they say uh, that a mind filled with any of these qualities is abundant exalted immeasurable without hostility 
and without ill will. I just love that quote. You know, I think we can feel in ourselves that uh, beauty of that. Yeah. A mind filled with any of these is abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without ill will. That's where we're heading. Yeah. And maybe that sense of these are teachings of liberation make sense when we imagine what that mind yeah, would feel like to embody for us and what that mind uh, would bring forth into the world. So with that, let's practice. Uh, and um, <clears throat> if you're not already in your comfortable meditation posture, then please take it. We'll have a half hour of practice together. So finding your seat or your stand, or your reclining posture, or your walking posture, whatever is appropriate for you to use this period of practice together. Making any adjustments that you need to make. So that the body is as supported, stable and steady. Balanced as possible. As you settle into the posture, into the body, just noticing if there's any gratitude or appreciation. Right here in this moment, we're still settling, but oh, what a blessing. What a blessing to be able to do this, to have the conditions, to have the intention have the community. And letting that gratitude, appreciation, if it's there, letting it infuse our experience as we settle more fully into the body, into the posture. Perhaps as we check in with a balance of uprightness and ease. As awareness is guided more fully and deeply into the body. Noticing the sensations of contact, if that's helpful for you, and stabilizing, grounding the awareness in those sensations. Contact of the body and that which supports it. Softly allowing the awareness gently to expand from the gatheredness and the contact sensations into the whole body, taking your time with this. Softening and opening through the body. Having a sense of the whole body here. And 
And this practice as a movement of appreciation and gratitude, of care and kindness in the world. So having a sense of groundedness and openness, the whole body here. And the capacity to rest attention in the body, the immediate experience. Body's not a helpful place and at a sensible hearing can be very helpful. And just like awareness is open, spread through the whole body, including the whole body, also includes a whole range of our experience, the beautiful and the challenging. We're open to hold it all in tenderness. Hold it all in tenderness again and again. Meeting our experience with tenderness and bathing it with tenderness. So let's just explore that in silence for a little while. Whole body met, whole range of experience met. Compassion and tenderness and bathed in compassion and tenderness.
So opening to notice what you notice in this moment. Meeting that with care and interest. What happens when we include everything that is happening in the body right now in this attitude of tenderness, everything this body is known and well known, all held and bathed in compassion, held and bathed and met with tenderness. Using what is helpful for you here to support this. Maybe images, it may be phrases, you know, that sense of the whole being bathed or a particular aspect of bodily life or heart life bathed in tenderness with warmth and care. It may be a sense of, you know, this wish phrased in words, may I be safe or may I be held, may I feel held in tenderness, may my suffering ease. Gently saying what supports this clarity of intention, supports us to nourish this meeting of experience with tenderness and compassion. And again, I'll be silent to allow you to explore this yourself. And seeing if and of what's helpful here. And if we're meeting a particular place and we feel the impact of that on the whole body or maybe it's the whole body the whole range of experience right now that's being filled with compassion and tenderness and once more let's take some time in silence to explore this
And once again, notice what you notice. Is it possible to meet this moment of experience with tenderness and care? Can we let the whole space of the body fill with compassion, care, tenderness? And can we let that radiate and expand as appropriate into the world? Maybe a sense of this whole body like a field of compassion, care, and tenderness radiating out. A field radiating in all directions to all beings. It may be more appropriate to do that in a particular direction towards a particular group or person. A friend that we know is struggling right now. All those who are experiencing similar heartache to ourselves right now. All those who are living in a situation of unsafety. So finding what works. But we keep finding this within the space of the body, filling it with tenderness, with compassion, with care, letting it radiate internally, hum internally be bathed internally and then that expanding out towards another, others, all beings. Again, uh, images may be helpful. Uh, just this field of tenderness through the whole body, either radiating or expanding out, growing as fast as the world. Or it may be that the phrases are helpful for us. May we all be safe. May we all feel safe. May we all be held in compassion and tenderness. And seeing what works, what's appropriate for you and your experience as over and over, bathe his body, heart, mind and tenderness and radiate that tenderness out. Let it flow out.
radiating compassion in all directions, including this body, heart, mind and beyond. Exploring, just opening out that field of awareness, letting it be bathed and filled with compassion, with tenderness and care. Expansive and spacious, opening out whatever direction and space is appropriate, letting it all fill, radiate, hum, be bathed in tenderness and compassion over and over again. May we all be safe and feel safe. May our suffering ease and dissolve. May we all feel held and be held in compassion and tenderness. Inviting yourself to keep that thread of tenderness and care as you, if you choose to open the eyes or change the posture of the body, taking your time with this, there's really no rush at all to do so. In a moment, uh, we'll open to questions or reflections as always if you can begin um, the question or reflection in the chat with the word question or reflection ideally in capitals that helps me to um, find them to locate them in the stream of chat messages um, before we do that um, someone asked yesterday for ideas of donations to Gaza in particular. And I said I would post um, the link to our website, the Sangaseva website and the Palestine support page on it, which is uh, not a page you can just search for. Um, so I will do that in a minute. Um, and that page is regularly updated with organizations that we recommend supporting and at the moment it does have a small grassroots organization in Gaza that is accepting donations so uh, if you're interested in that have a look also a possibility to support Palestinians in the West Bank um, and I also will post the chat the um, link to the Sangha Live donation page um, to support all of us here uh, both the Sangha Live platform um, and all the costs that go into making these sessions available, the work that goes into making these sessions available, and uh, whatever you offer this week as a form of dana will be shared between Sangha Live for the platform costs and myself for the teaching. Um, and it's very, very gratefully um, received. So it can be interesting in alignment with the practice today of just feeling our dana being a goodness that's radiating out into the world. It's not something we're 
necessarily giving ourselves. It also is giving it to ourselves, but we're also giving it to others. We're supporting um, what matters in the world, the qualities of compassion and of wisdom uh, in the world. So, yeah, here are the links. Uh, first, the Sangha Live one, and then the Sangha Seva one. And uh, read through the whole Sangha Seva one because the text uh, is about food parcels, which we were doing a few a month ago. Uh, but it's uh, it's a bit more than that now. Okay, let's see if there's any questions, any reflections that have come up. Uh, about the practice today, about the teachings today or previous days. And it can also be about general things to do with practice and the teachings if you wish. Um, I'll prioritize questions and reflections around what we've been doing so far. But um, yeah, hopefully, usually there's been time to answer everything. So let's see what arises, what appears. And a worthwhile kind of thing to reflect on for ourselves is it can also be, you know, uh, what happens to our experience when we expand in that way, when we have a sense of radiating compassion and tenderness um, to, to, to others, what happens when we radiate it internally. Uh, as I was saying earlier today, I'm really interested to get to know this territory as part of our learning, part of our growth, uh, part of our development as um, bodhisattvas, you know, those who wish to alleviate suffering for all uh, in the world. Very nice to sit here and uh, just feel this uh, community you know, radiating care across the planet and to feel oneself as part of that, you know, that web, that network. So let's see what comes as questions and reflections. I'm aware that I am. Um, I said quite a lot this morning, so maybe um, difficult to pick out a particular strand uh, but maybe I'll use this time as perhaps people are reflecting or typing um, just to kind of emphasize that the key points you know, this um, one is you know the range of both meta goodwill kindness and of compassion from just the negation of the opposite yeah the non-ill will, the non-enmity, which we can bring forth even in challenging situations, um, all the way to a deep sense of friendship and non-harming, you know, that wish not to harm, all the way to deep uh, compassion and a movement of alleviating suffering. Um, and so that is really, really helpful to remember. And then the fact that there's always somewhere where we can direct or radiate these beautiful qualities of heart and mind. And so much of our practice is about the appropriateness of where and how. So here there's a um, first question from Alistair, thank you. I'm on the spectrum, so struggle with general themes unless they are peppered with concrete examples. Can you help me a bit with this? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah. I wonder, um, I'll, I'll respond, um, assuming that I understand um, what, what you need, um, with the general themes being maybe this, uh, what I just said, for example. Um, yeah, 
I'm, I'm particularly careful these days with particular uh, examples because, but it's a really good point from you, Alistair, and thank you, because I'm aware of just how raw, how much rawness and woundedness there is uh, in many of us at these times. So I kind of don't want to give particular examples if they trigger, but then, yeah, it's the opposite. Um, so for example, you know, we may um, feel that there's a, a certain, say, politician or, or um, political group or political ideas or a group of people in the world that are causing a lot of suffering. And it may be very difficult for us to bring a sense of compassion or friendliness to that, yeah, or to them. Um, and kind of the, the practice then says, okay, maybe I can't um, wish well for this person, but I can certainly uh, have a feeling of non-enmity for them or a wish that they don't suffer, yeah? So, you know, in that case, say if we're working with the phrases, we might, um, you know, instead of saying, you know, may you be bathed in tenderness, if that feels like too much, we may just feel, say, you know, may you be uh, free of suffering. And that's the kind of the non-harming rather than, uh, or may you understand what brings happiness. <laughs> that can be a really good one, uh, particularly with politicians, I have to say. Yeah, um, you know, it's like, ah, may you understand the causes of happiness and what brings happiness and what doesn't, because we know from our practice that that wisdom lens and when we understand what brings happiness, we act in much less harmful ways. So I hope that response do guide me more clearly if it's something else that felt general rather than specific and that it would be helpful um, to have an example uh, for. And I see we have quite a few reflections. Yeah, the hardest part for me to feel meta towards were those who act with cruelty in the world whether that's in the school playground or the in intensive agriculture or in war zones, it made me aware how much of our upbringing condones cruelty. And again, how sad that is. More tears. Yeah. Thanks for that, Joss. So yeah, it's again, a particular example. Yeah. The bully in the, in the playground um, or the, the kind of intensive agriculture that harms the planet um, or war zones. Um, and, and yeah, so acknowledging in this case are the conditions that lead to that, yeah? And that is painful, yeah? And I'll say another thing that can be really helpful here is to differentiate between harmful actions and harmful essence. So this helps with this non-enmity or non-harming because we often feel this person is doing this, say they're spraying their fields with uh, intense chemicals, even though they know the damage that causes. Uh, to life um, and they're a bad person and then we get tight constricted and en enmitized uh, towards that person uh, but if we say no those are really unhelpful unskillful actions and they're harmful but we don't put the person outside of our heart yeah so that's and that's a skill to do uh, but we can also see you know I'm, I'm kind of weaving from Joss's, Joss's reflection we can also see that um, if we let enmity build up in our own heart, we are actually contributing to that which pains us. Yeah. And this is a, a deep insight and deep wisdom that we need to apply again and again. And we need a lot of compassion for ourselves here and forgiveness. But when we follow that reflex of enemizing, yeah, or having hostility or ill will, and it will happen to us because we're human and we're conditioned. When we follow that, what is that contributing to? Is that leading towards that which we want to see in the world in ourselves or others, or is that feeding it? And so, yeah, this is, you know, this path is relentless. <laughs> it's called the path of no escape in the seeing, yeah? Seeing, looking with honesty and with compassion and with clarity and developing that. Um, as we practice. Um, yeah. I found myself di directing kindness to my own inner, crit inner cynic voice, yes. 
and gain some understanding of its attempts as a part of myself that is just trying to protect me with questioning and doubting. This felt useful as a way to gently bring down my own resistance to sharing with others. Um, thank you for this session and all in the Sangha. Yes, beautiful. Thank you, Tim. Now, again, this is what we're talking about. You know, there's an inner voice inside which is cynical. And, it, and we look at it more deeply and we see, we don't make it an enemy. Yeah? Interested, oh, it wants to protect me. That's what it's trying to do. Um, it's not necessarily all helpful. Aspects of it may be very helpful, but not all of it. And so when I meet that with understanding, that's another really good word, meet that with understanding rather than with uh, shutting down and pushing away, that changes something in the dynamic. Um, and so, yeah, very, very, another really beautiful reflection, really helpful. Um, I'm just gonna jump to the question and then um, I will come back to the reflections that are here already. Um, but I'm aware of the time and that some of you may need to go. So respecting that or we'll take another five or six minutes uh, for those who wish to stay and it will also be on the recording. If you need to go, then thank you so much for being here. Go well and you know, keep the practice alive in a way that's nourishing. It's such a beautiful path that we're walking and it's so needed. You know, what we're cultivating is so needed in the world. So could you please write the words from the Buddha you mentioned? Okay, that's an easy one. Yes, I will just put that into the chat in a moment. And I have a feeling we will be also working with this quote tomorrow. So, yeah, this is a, a quote uh, that the Buddha uses for all the Brahma Viharas, the, the friendliness and kindness, the joy, the compassion, and equanimity. Okay, so reflection from um, Penny there. Contemplating compassion and non-ill will for everyone, even though whose actions I cannot condone, gave me an insight into my own suffering, allowed me room to recognize it more clearly and feel self-compassion. Yeah, beautiful. And we see the mutual um, nourishment there, yeah. When we start to look at others and the fact that they act unskillfully and harmfully sometimes, that brings it back to the times when we do. Yeah? And it allows us, if we cultivate compassion towards that and understanding, understanding its condition, then what are the conditions that bring to that? Then we have more compassion and understanding towards our own imperfections and the places where we may also be um, you know, thinking, acting uh, in ways that, that are harmful. Um, so it's it's a it's a beautiful uh, reflection, seeing that mutuality, seeing that um, recipro reciprocity uh, between the two movements, um, and yeah, and seeing what causes suffering also. Because I, I'll just say this, you know, when our heart is closed, or when there's enmity or ill will or hatred in our own heart, that is not a state of well-being. Yeah, we also see that. And we do that again to protect ourselves. Um, but can we kind of learn, explore, is it possible to relax that to some degree and still be protected and actually sometimes be much more deeply and fully protected um, than we habitually think? Yes, and I think this is the last question or reflection. My mind was busy as it usually is. And today, as I received this with acceptance and kindness, it transformed my response to this to a brightness and sense of playfulness rather than struggle. With tenderness, an image of my daughter holding a baby came to mind and a sense of tender cradling. Thank you for the wonderful sensitive guidance. Yeah, just again, the power of the practice. We see it, you know, when we bring that intention to meet our experience differently, all these things open up acceptance and kindness that the mind is busy rather than the struggle and interesting enough sometimes the struggle and the resistance feed yeah, that agitation rather than allow it to move through so you know the brightness the kindness and then that really moving image uh, coming in and touching the heart uh, really deeply yeah 
So, yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your presence, for your kindness, for your um, showing up for this practice, which is radical and revolutionary and deeply needed by each of us and by all of us. Uh, yeah, for all beings everywhere and for this precious planet that we share. So go well and I will see you tomorrow for our last session together. Blessings. <laughs>